Don't you just love pirating media? This is great. It's instant and it's all free on your friendly neighborhood shady website. Yeah, pirating's pretty bad, but it's kind of a necessary evil. A lot of us want to play all these different games, watch all these different movies, but unfortunately, we don't have the money for all of them. As much as we want to support the people who make the content, we don't make the big bucks you guys make being sponsored by them, okay? We have to make some compromises. I can't pay for every single streaming service known to man, I can't spend a hundred plus dollars just to watch one show, and sometimes my local library doesn't have the thing I'm looking for, okay? And some of the best pieces of media ever made are not available on legal streaming services or any legal service at all. They're not even in America. I want to support the industry as much as I can, but in order to consume this awesome content and not risk being broke, eh, sometimes you just gotta say fuck it. But when you do have the money and you are able to spend it on something nice, oh, it's great. There really is something special about owning the physical media, you know, when you have that once in a blue moon moment where you can just buy the copy of the thingy and you have it in your hands and you have it on your shelf, it just lets you say, yes, of course I'm a fan of the book in question because I own it. And what better place to go to than Barnes and Noble, where you can just pick up the clean mint condition book and say, now that is what I call a book. Dude, shut the fuck up. What a great hangout spot. It's so cozy, you know, so inviting, so friendly. It's a great place to go to for manga because nobody goes there for novels, fucking dorks. You can look through them and give them sort of a, you know, a little taste test, you know, a sample, see what you like. You fucking bitch. It's a magical place of self-expression, self-discovery, finding a new series to, I'm bored, let's just get something and go. So I got Uzumaki, and there's no other way to say it, but owning this book is so cool. Um, normally I wouldn't go out of my way to read Uzumaki online, for example, but having the book and just seeing this beautiful cover on this fat, like, hardcover book, it just gives me more of an incentive to read it. Like, online, it's like, oh, look, I'm reading Uzumaki. I guess, look, it's Uzumaki, he's right there. But with this, it feels like a special, like sweet little booklet of horror stories. Reading it just feels so good. You can really appreciate Junji Ito's artwork since it's not all pixely and washed out like on the, 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 the sites. And the pages are much better quality than your average manga volume. I've read very little of this, but as of right now, I'm very much enjoying it. And I'm very excited for the Adult Swim adaptation. I think the style, the movement of the animation is perfect and completely different from any modern anime that, that's out right now. But yeah, that was Uzumaki. Um, also, here's some other manga that I own. Next, I got some DVDs to show you. Uh, now, this is a bit interesting because reading online or having a physical copy are like two completely different experiences for me. But whether it's a DVD or streaming, it's pretty much just going to be on your TV or laptop once you play it. So the experience is going to be relatively the same at the end of the day. But I still think owning DVDs are pretty cool. You know, you got your guaranteed HD video instead of it being blurry when you start a show on HBO Max, for example. Damn. Plus, you got your DVD extras. I think owning Blu-rays and DVDs these do have its cool factors so here are my evangelion dvds definitely gonna watch the rebuild films i feel like i need a better appreciation for evangelion as a whole since end of evangelion is actually one of my favorite movies of all time so i should probably check out the entire saga i guess we got shazam deadpool 1 and 2 very excited for 3 the shrek quadrilogy joker the back to the future trilogy and star wars here are some of my games. I try not to buy too many games unless there's a massive sale or I just like really need it. Like Shin Megami Tensei 3, I know a lot of people don't like this remaster because it doesn't do enough to justify being like $50. And to those naysayers, I say, I got it for 15, so sucks to be you. But yeah, here you go. Now I just wanna show off these last two graphic novels. 
Here is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin. This is one of my favorite comic books of all time and the best present my girlfriend has ever got me. She got the hardcover too, look at that. For those who don't know, it's a TMNT story that takes place in a dark future where most of the turtles have died along with some other major characters, but one turtle remains. I'm not gonna spoil who that turtle is, but he's pretty much become the ultimate assassin as he's taken the weapons of all his brothers and carried on some of their best traits into fighting. So he's going on this crusade to avenge his brothers and to stop this future's new shredder. It really hits home this really dark edge of the TMNT comics because if you didn't know, the TMNT comics are actually a lot darker than you'd expect with some amazing artwork as well, telling a really bleak story that can kind of fit as sort of a conclusion to the Ninja Turtles despite being in its own continuity. As for the new Mutant Mayhem movie coming out next month, I'm not really that excited about it to be honest, and from what I hear there doesn't really seem to be like too much hype around it outside of its art direction. It hasn't come out yet, so I'm not going to be too harsh on it. All I'm going to say is with every new trailer that comes out, I want a Last Ronin movie animated in this style more and more just not these character designs, they're kind of gross. I think it'd be a bit hard to do that, especially off the back of this movie, since from my knowledge, most Turtles media outside of the comics are relatively family friendly. So having a dark gritty TMNT movie would be pretty jarring, especially for kids seeing all their favorite childhood heroes get fucking murdered. But the last Ronin has gained quite a bit of attention, as well deserved, and I think adapting this can prove that the TMNT can tell stories for pretty much any demographic, like Batman, where you got your kid stuff and you got your big boy toys. <laughs> Finally, we have Watchmen, the greatest comic of all time, Alan Moore's magnum opus, I, I, I think. Okay, I'm gonna be real, I've tried to get into this story like three or four separate times and none of them have gone farther than like issue three. I was actually a child when I read this, so make up that what you will. Throwing aside all the mature content in this book, I think the reason this book was so hard for me to get into is that it's pretty slow. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, but as a kid, you definitely want more fast pacing, especially from a superhero story. But this is a deconstruction of the superhero genre, so this story is, from what I know, not necessarily like an action story. And as an ADHD ridden 11 year old boy, uh, speech bubbles are your worst nightmare. So as weird as this sentence is gonna sound, a murder mystery doesn't sound all too interesting when you're talking to a young fumbus. Uh, but I'll definitely finish it eventually, I'm sure it's pretty good. So that's it for this video. Just watch the movie. Really liked it, and I think I'll love this series even more. You can tell I'm trying not to open it too much because it's brand new and I don't want to bend it too much. I really like Nausicaa, but it's kind of the same thing with movies like Akira for me, where I really like them, but it's difficult for me to love them because I know that the movie only covers like part of the entire story. So it feels like I'm only getting part of the experience, whereas their manga counterparts are sitting there with much more content, much more story developments, and are probably just like better experiences. But don't be mistaken, their anime counterparts are still very much worth checking out, especially Akira, because I'd argue that in terms of animation to this day, it's still unbeat. There's something so nice about just getting these physical media. Nothing beats just opening it like Christmas Day and getting to admire it from afar. It just kind of makes the viewing experience more special. I feel a bit more immersed when I have a book in my hands instead of just scrolling online. I know this video seems more about books and graphic novels than physical media as a whole, but I don't know, I just have more to say with them. I just feel like the experience is just so much more different for me. Obviously, you can't beat the convenience and saving of money that is pirating, but really owning the physical copy of something just really feels more special to me. I don't know.